Hello there, it's Mia. Welcome back to my channel. Gusto kong magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga new subscribers ko. And everyone out there who's watching my videos, thank you, thank you so much guys. So, I have planned to make a videos regarding sa life cycle ng parasites. Dahil, Nung nag-review ako for boards, sobrang nahirapan akong intindihin siya. And pag magsasearch ka sa Google, pati YouTube, very complicated. YouTube, I mean, very complicated ang mga explanation. So, sa video ko nito, I'm going to explain it in its simplest way. Kung paano ko rin siya naintindihan. And... Reminder na ang life cycle ng parasites are very important kasi paborito itong tanungin sa board exam. So, without further ado, let's tap into it. Trematodes. For the life cycle of trematodes, you just need to remember the four important life cycle that I am going to discuss today. Let us start first with a parasite that contains a fertilized egg and a feces which is their diagnostic stage. So these are mga PEF. And so PEF stands for Paragonimus, Echinostoma, Fasciola, and Fasciolopsis. So this fertilized egg is a mature Myrosidia. And through water, it will become embryonated egg. Yung shell niya mapipisa and will release a developed Myrosidia. This developed Myrosidia contains cilia, as their organ of locomotion. Also, the developed Myrosidia is the first asexual larva of all trematodes. It will now penetrate the snail tissue, which is the first intermediate host, and then mature into sporosis. These sporosis have pseudopodia as their organ of locomotion. Also, the sporosis is an asexual larva of trematodes. But, the first asexual larva of all trematodes is still the developed Myrosidia because it is the progenitor. The sporosis will now develop into radiae that also contains pseudopodia as their organ of locomotion. And then, the motile cercaria is released into the water. They are already motile because they contain flagella as their organ of locomotion. It is also the first sexual larva of all trematodes. Now, the cercaria will develop into metacercaria, which will infect the second intermediate host of Paragonimus, Echinostoma, Fasciola, and Fasciolopsis, and will infect the human. Let us go now to trematodes that start with embryonated egg. First is the family of Opistorchiidae. Cephesis, my embryonated egg. So as you can see, that the embryonated egg is with shoulder. That means, undeveloped amyrosidia. And through ingestion, by the snail, which is the first intermediate host, it will now develop into myrosidia, and then sporocyst, radiae, cercariae, and develop into metacercaria, which will infect the second intermediate host, which is the fish. Next is the heterophyte. So fesis, my embryonated egg. Unlike opistarchus, the heterophyte eggs doesn't have a shoulder, which only means it is already a fully developed myrosidia. So when ingested by the snail, it will directly develop into sporosis, then radiae, cercaria, and develop into metacercaria that will infect the second intermediate host, which is the fish. The life cycle of schistosomes. First, the eggs shed in urine or feces. So their diagnostic stage is the embryonated egg. Through water, the eggs hatch, releasing myrosidia. And through skin penetration as their mode of transmission, the myrosidia invades snail tissue that serve as their intermediate host and then mature into sporosis. The sporosis inside the snail will reproduce asexually and release a motile cercaria into water. After, 
the cercaria penetrate unbroken skin and develop into schistosomule. So a schistosomule is a schistosoma without a tail. Smart ang parasite na to. Kasi once they enter the human body, iniiwan nila ang buntot nila since this part contains an antigen. So ang mga macrophages, instead mapatay nila ang parasite, hinahabol nila yung buntot lang na iniwan ng schistosomule. Kasi yun ang may antigen. So very wise ang parasite na to. Next, the schistosomule will travel into the veins, lungs, mesenteric, until they reach the liver and mature. Very interesting ang adult ng schistosomule. Because when they mate, the male holds the female in his groove fertilizing eggs. So as you can see, na mas payat at mahaba ang female kesa sa male. So now the adults travel to different parts of gastrointestinal or urinary tract that depends on what type of schistosome it is. And then the adults will release egg that will later shed in urine or feces. These schistosomes can stay up to 10 years in human body. And then the whole process continues. That's it for the life cycle of trematodes. Guys, kung hindi nyo siya naintindihan, you can go back to the video again, skip nyo yung intro, and then mag-start kayo kung saan ako nag-explain. Ulit-ulitin nyo siya hanggang sa maintindihan nyo. Since I mentioned earlier, di ba, na it is going to be the life cycle of parasites, hindi lang trematodes. So, for today, trematodes lang yung diniscuss ko. And then, on the next week, may itidiscuss din akong ibang life cycle of parasites. So you have to be updated for my next video. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching and please click the notification bell so you will be updated for my next video.